All right, so now how do we actually list out items that are stored in our database? Now, before we get to the database side, let's actually just see the Python list side and go with maybe some intuition you might have. So if we go ahead and say my list and set it equal to some arbitrary list of numbers or array of numbers, you can call it a list or array, uh, but it's the idea is that it's a bunch of items in sequence in these brackets here. And so this list right here, I want to actually display it in my template here. So a way to do this is to say, well, let's go ahead and just say my list and string, and we can set that equal to an empty list. And I'm gonna do it the beginner's way. So there's certainly a more efficient Pythonista way to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and loop through and say four X in my list. We're gonna go ahead and just say my list string plus equals to an F string of number is, and then just simply X, okay? So what we're doing here is we're converting this list into a long string and each string has the value of my or number is X and then it starts a new line, okay? So we could actually bring this in to our template and say my list string. And of course, if I come into my template and render this out, maybe right below content, just like this, what we should see is that content actually being rendered. Let's actually make sure our server is running, opening up the terminal, running the server, coming back in, and what do you know? So it's actually showing out this content. Now it's not creating a new line or anything, we'll come back to that, but the idea is it's now actually unpacked that content into a single variable. And now, of course, this is not the most efficient way to do this, or the preferred way even. So if you know HTML pretty well, you know that you can probably use a UL list or an unordered list uh, right here, a UL tag. And what we could do is probably put an LI tag on either side of this one. Okay, so we save it. So now if you think about it, it should be a long string of these, right? So we save it, make sure our home view is still saved as well. And let's take a look. Wait a minute, what happened here? So what Django doesn't do by default is render HTML strings. So if we come back to our view, this might've been a little confusing because I'm like, hey, before I actually rendered an HTML string, but I didn't. What I did was I responded with an HTML string. Render to string takes a template and the context for that, and it adds in some security features such as this one. It's not gonna render arbitrary HTML in this case. And really, this is not how we wanna handle this logic anyway. So if we're passing in context to our template to be viewed, then the template is what should be handling this logic. So to look at this, let's go ahead and get rid of my list string altogether. And let's actually pass in my list as context now. So it's actually a proper list. And so we'll change our variable in here to just simply my list. And we can refresh in there. And what do you know? It actually renders out a list. It renders the brackets and everything. So that's pretty cool, but it's not quite what we needed. Instead, what we need is we need to be able to loop through this list. And you can do this using a for loop inside of the template, which gives it its own sort of programming language, if you will. So this is the template programming language for Django. So we can do 4x in or for arbitrary variables. So this could be ABC, it could be my var, whatever you wanna call it. But the idea is 4x in this list, curly brackets just like that. So this is the start of the loop. Now, since this is a template and it's following a lot of you know HTML rules, not Python rules, but HTML rules, we need to denote that it closes too. So let's go ahead and close it off with n4, okay? So this actually should make sense because inside of Python, you have spacing for stuff like this. So 4x in my list, and you can print out you know x, right? So this is all happening because of spacing. Now, if there weren't spacing or if there was not spacing, just like the template, there is no spacing even though I have it spaced out, but this works just as well as this does, okay? So the spacing is a issue for us. So of course we have to close it off. And that's the same with the block content as well. And so now what I can do is actually render out that X variable or whatever that is. 
And here is where I can put in my HTML that I want to be rendered. And now it's actually a safe way to render out that data. I don't actually need a string any longer showing that it should be in a list element, an HTML list element. So I refresh that and now it's actually showing up correctly. Now you might be wondering, are there cases where you can render HTML inside of a context as in coming from the view? Can you do that? And the answer is yes, of course there's a way to do it. Um, that's just a little bit more advanced for us at this point. Okay, so now we know how to render out lists in here. Now this doesn't only work for lists, but we'll just stick with lists for now because it's pretty fundamental. The idea now is how do I get something similar to this, but instead of it being something our hard code, but rather from the database. Now, of course, this is a standard practice as well. So what we wanna do here is say article underscore list, and it's gonna be article dot objects dot all. Okay, so article dot objects at all actually gives me some sort of list here. And this list I can actually replace my list with. Okay, and we can also print out what that looks like. So let's go ahead and do both things. Okay, so if I refresh in here, now I'm getting article object one, two, three, four. So this is now showing me everything that I have stored in the database. And if you actually stored a lot more things, you will see a lot more data here. And this will take a lot of time if you have thousands upon thousands of entries or even millions of entries, this would take a long time to display all of those because it's literally getting all of them from the database. And so if we actually look in the terminal, we can also see that printout. Notice that it says query set here. Now, the reason it says query set is because this is not actually a list. It, it behaves like a list, but it is not a list. It's called a query set. The reason it's called a query set is because instead of it having individual objects in here, you have other features that you can do to this. You, you have other more advanced things. Like we can actually filter this down right on this so-called query set. And so that's a little bit more advanced than what we've got here, but we just wanna keep in mind that we, when we are trying to get a list of objects from the database or really through a Django model, right? So we've got this Django model, we wanna get a bunch of objects from this Django model that is called a query set. So not article list, but rather article query set, okay? And often article QS for short, but I'll leave it in as query set as to not confuse us too much, okay? So let's go ahead and get rid of these other items here because we don't no longer need them. And now what we're gonna do is put in our article query set, no longer call it my list, but rather call it object list. And again, this is another place where you could call it query set, but object list actually makes the most sense as we'll get into later. And so now that we've got this object list as our context, going back into our template, we can iterate through the object list in there. And again, we are still seeing this same data, right? So this is actually really cool. And perhaps something that is like, well, why would I wanna list these things out? Like what's the true purpose for this? Well, the true purpose is so that inside of the list, inside of the template, I can use dot notation to get things that are attributed to the model itself. So x.title and x.content. Uh, this is actually getting the object's title and content. And if we refresh, what do you know? There it is. The very first one doesn't have anything, but all of the other ones do. This also gives us, hey, a really nice opportunity to use one more flow statement inside of this for loop, and that is a if statement. So if we say if x.title, then we render that out. We would also say an end if. So whatever we open inside of a template, we must close. And so now we have a way to eliminate that other one that didn't have a title from the equation. That's a simple and easy way to do it right inside of a template. Now this can also be done and probably should be done inside of a query set. But again, that's getting a little bit more advanced than we need at this point. So the template actually works pretty well. The other thing is we could actually link this whole list here and we could say a href equals to maybe slash articles and then x.id and then a slash and then we link this whole thing. Notice that I'm still using those curly brackets even inside of a string because the thing is Django templates does not 
care about strings. It's literally going to render anytime there's a curly bracket here, it's going to render whatever's there if it can. Like if I put abc.id here, it's not going to render anything, but x.id will. So go ahead and put x.id. And now that we've got these links, as you see in the corner here, we can actually click on one and it'll open up, you know, be page not found, which of course is something we will address. Uh, but now we have these things actually linked. If I did abc.id, what's going to actually happen? So we refresh, it's still linked. And what happens is it just doesn't have that value, right? So there's no, nothing in there. That's what the link ends up being. So it's a really easy way to get caught uh, up quite a bit when you're designing these links, which we will definitely address as well. But again, these are getting more and more advanced. It's getting deeper and deeper into Django to really unpack all of the amazing features that comes into Django. Um, so at this point, we have a lot done, even though it feels like, probably feels like we still have a lot to go. Um, but the rule of thumb here is we can now get a single item from the database or a bunch of them. We can render them out as we see fit. We can also add them to the database through the shell, uh, the Python shell as we did before with that reference guide, right? So we can add, we can read them. We can do all sorts of really cool things already. Now, this is the fun thing about Django to me is that we start to unpack more and more of these amazing features. And hopefully at this point, you're like hooked. It's like, okay, well, now I can see that I can build a lot of really cool and interesting things. Because even with how the template is, right here, you probably have enough of the skills necessary to build a pretty cool project, even if it's like, seems like it's pretty basic, but there's a lot of businesses that don't do this to this day. Like think about a restaurant, like a restaurant that you really like, that's just this small mom and pop that doesn't even have a way to do this with their menu coming from a database. That happens a lot, far more than you might expect in this day and age, given the technology that's out there. But that's okay, that's where the opportunity lives, that's where we can learn these things and really help a lot of other people with their projects. Now, of course, I still think there's a lot more to go, so let's go ahead and tackle the next challenge, which would be handling, you know, these links, what we created right here. How do we go about doing that? So let's make sure that everything's saved up correctly and we can actually go to these, but how do we actually handle this now?